of Rex Hureman this morning, continuing to search for the evidence linking him not only to the Gilgo Beach murders, but to possible murders in Las Vegas and now Atlantic City. Yeah, Suffolk County Sheriff Errol Toulon actually spoke with a suspected serial killer inside of the jail who's currently on suicide watch at the county correctional facility, which the sheriff is in charge of. Sheriff Toulon joining us this morning to bring us up to speed on the investigation. So, Sheriff, we appreciate you being here this morning to break things down for us. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. Of course. So, Sheriff, I understand that you visited Rex Hewerman's cell multiple times, right? So can you describe the, the interactions, the conversations, and his overall demeanor? You know, uh, he's very unusual. His overall demeanor is um, someone that's just uh, accepted uh, where he's at right now. You know, when you think about maybe two weeks ago, this individual was walking amongst our streets uh, in New York City in Massapequa Park, and now confined to a, a six by nine uh, cell. Uh, he's still on suicide watch, so he has nothing in that cell. Yeah. Uh, the few times that I visited him, about three times, uh, he was laying on his bunk, uh, just lifted his head up once to uh, acknowledge us. He hasn't spoke much to our staff uh, since his incarceration, other than in the very beginning where he acknowledged or said to us that he would not give us any issues or with their um, he wouldn't be any problems to us while he's incarceration. So we had to take several precautions uh, just to ensure uh, the safety of my staff and the other inmates, including Mr. Human, uh, while he's in our custody. What um, what other people have tried to visit him? Any family members, his kids by chance, his coworkers? No, no one has tried to visit him at all. The only uh, person that he has had a visit with is his attorney. So can you, I understand that some of the inmates in the facility, Sheriff, have had interactions with Huberman in the past, meaning before he was incarcerated, right? Can you describe who those individuals are and if, and those interactions they had prior to Huberman being in the facility? Sure. So our human trafficking unit, uh, when we knew who the suspect was, we started uh, looking at the cell phone numbers and where they were pinging, and we actually had two uh, formerly incarcerated uh, females who actually uh, Rex Human had contacted, but they never met him. So that, that's very important to remember that they had never met him. So they're not victims. They don't have a, a description of him. But because of the cell phone uh, towers of the various mm -hmm. cell phones, uh, burner cell phones he had, we were able to connect them to get, uh, together. Before we move on to the investigation part of this, is there any reason to believe that you're fearing for his life from someone else attacking him or him taking his own life at this point? Well, you know, I, I've been in this business since 1982 yeah. and uh, have dealt with many, many uh, not notable uh, individuals who have been incarcerated when I worked 25 years on Rikers Island. And one of the things that, and you've seen this across the country, I'm sure, where inmates that have some sort of notoriety are, are assaulted, uh, sometimes because someone knows them, or they may be uh, a way for that individual to have some street credibility by saying mm. they've assaulted someone. So. You know, we have to make sure that everybody's protected, including my staff, Mr. Human, and the other inmates in our custody. So you're doing so by shutting the facility down, freezing it, really, if he's on the move somewhere, correct? That exactly right. And also, we've uh, added an additional correction officer into his housing area, and we have put uh, cameras. Understood. Sheriff, I want to move on to the investigation right now because there are reports this morning, and I'm wondering if you can help clarify some of this, that investigators are zeroing in on the fact that Huberman may have allegedly killed some of these women inside that Massapequa Parker home where we see the investigators at. Can you speak to that? So the Suffolk County Police Department is, is the lead agency with that investigation. Uh, so I'm not privy to everything that's going on, uh, exactly what uh, any murders that may have uh, occurred uh, inside the residence. But I do know that we are looking uh, as a joint task force at every possibility of anyone who has gone missing, anyone that has been murdered, uh, along the stretch, um, really across the country, when you look down to South Carolina and Las Vegas, of anywhere where Rex Human may have been. On that note, can you talk more specifically about the connection to Atlantic City and Las Vegas? I know that there are sex workers who have died in that area suspiciously. You know, only because the investigation is still ongoing and evidence is being gathered, and now we're looking uh, on a much broader aspect because originally this was just. Uh, Gilgo Beach, and it seems to be taking a life of its own that um, I, I cannot comment at, the, at this time. So can you help us understand, Sheriff, this DNA, right? Because there's a lot of talk about DNA to see if it links Hureman to other crimes. 
But what's the timeline there to this? Are we talking days, weeks of months and when DNA is analyzed in these other areas of Atlantic City to, to search these DNA databases? Well, you know, the, the, the issue when we're looking at DNA is the fact that there's so much evidence that we're gathering from not only uh, uh, his residence, but the storage containers, uh, other areas throughout the state and then other areas throughout the country, that this is going to be a painstaking uh, investigation. Uh, I do know that this is a top priority, but, you know, to make sure that each piece of evidence is analyzed properly, you know, right. does take some time. But, but, but if you put, and, and I'm sorry if, I'm, if it sounds too simple, but if you put the DA in the system, does it automatically match to DNA, say, in Las Vegas or Atlantic City, or that has to really be analyzed? No, it would definitely, uh, in, a, in, a, in the database that we're use, that's being utilized, it would come up if there was a hit in South Carolina, if it was Las Vegas, or anywhere else okay. throughout the country. Okay. And uh, do you know of any other locations? I read something about Massachusetts possibly having a trailer that's being searched. You know, at this point, I do know about South, South Carolina and Las Vegas. Um, I do not know about Massachusetts and um, you know, this is an ongoing thing where I'm receiving updates sometimes uh, several times a day, but there are different levels from what's going on inside our facilities with him and then also the investigation. Uh, Sheriff, just to come full circle back to, to the facility, I understand from reports again that Hureman actually turned down two visits. Who were those visits with? Sure. Those two visits were actually with journalists. Uh, and, you know, he has the right. Anyone can register to visit him. But he has the right to refuse any visit, and as of right now, it seems like that's where he's going. That's where he's going, except for his attorney. Understood, Sheriff Toulon. I know you're very busy, so I appreciate you taking the time this morning to talk to us here live on Pix 11. Thank you both for having me on. Okay.